You've got your axes there uh, on your page. The examples we were talking about before, the examples we were talking about before, let's go for one of these. Height versus shoe size. Okay. So we've got two axes here. Each one is named after one of the variables. So I might have height over here and shoe size over here. Okay. Now this is really, really important because when you have a look, this scatter plot that you're looking at, this is almost warmed up. This scatter plot that you're looking at looks really similar to a dot plot, doesn't it? Like, isn't it full of dots? So, let me get this on the right display. What's the difference? That's not a rhetorical question, by the way. What is the difference between the scatter plot you've got in front of you and the dot plots that we were talking about before? These are scattered. These are scattered. Well done. Okay. What? Ooh, hold on. Shut up. Wait, so I think the dot plot only has one axis. Oh, now, hold on. Oh, Careful. Hold on. Careful. <laughs> when we draw dot plots, often we only draw them with one axis. In fact, that example that I drew over here in the corner before, it just had one axis, right? It's like the scores get bigger, and then you've got dots that go up. But another, a second vertical axis is implied, just like here, right? On a dot plot, when you go up, what does that mean? When you've got dots and they're stacked up and the, the <laughs> column goes really high, what does that mean? It goes up and it's more it's more score. Say it again, right? More scores. You've got more scores, right? So for example, I could say, oh, here's three, four, five, six as a score out of ten. Right? And then if that goes really high, that means, oh, I've got lots of people who scored ten. Right? So vertically, what does that mean? We have a word for this. It starts with an F when you've got lots of things. Frequency. It's frequency, oh, units, right? So even if you don't see it, there is always implied this vertical axis that means frequency. That is not what's going on here. This vertical axis has nothing to do with frequency. Okay. Okay. How do I make it clear that I've got lots of things? So, now, don't, don't draw this. Don't draw this. Because I just want you to picture again. I'm trying to make a comparison because the, the common error that students make is they look at this and they're like, it's dots. It's a dot plot. Okay. If you had a dot plot, <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. And you had a whole bunch of scores that were all on 10, right? Can someone tell me, it's not a trick question, but think about it. Can someone tell me, what would the difference be between this dot here and this dot here? It would mean it probably represents someone else, another person who got that. But in terms of the score, it was this the same. That's why they're all on 10. Okay. Now come back to, <coughs> excuse me, come back to the scatter plot. When you go up and down, there is a difference, isn't there? If it was this over here, up down means what? If something's higher, that means that person is taller. And if they're lower, then that means it's shorter. Okay. So what are we looking at here? Let's make this, and I'd like you to pick up your pen or pencil again this time. Let's make something like this. It doesn't have to have this many dots on it. Let's make this our scatter plot. If you're in a position like me, and um, it's hard to make single dots on your piece of paper, you might like to put X's, that's fine. Okay. So, yes, I'm not giving you any numbers on this. You don't need to worry about that. What are we looking at here? Okay. So, I'm trying to get a relationship between shoe size and height. I want to know, do these things have anything to do with each other? Okay. Now, on both this example and the one that I've manufactured, which is quite similar, if you could describe, and I'm happy for you to use common sense as well as looking at the graph, as height increases, what happens to shoe size? Increase. Generally speaking, it does seem to also increase, doesn't it? Generally speaking. Okay. Now, this is not exactly, like, it doesn't exactly line up. If you've got two people who are exactly the same height, they don't necessarily have exactly the same shoe size, do they? Right? So we would say, here's an important phrase to have underneath here. We would say, there is a, in this case, moderate relationship. Okay. 
between whatever the variables are that you're looking at. So I could say there's a moderate relationship between height and shoe size. Okay? There's clearly a relationship, but it's not like you know one, you know the other. Okay? Now, we've got a fancy word for this. You actually don't need to necessarily know it right now, but I want you guys to hear it anyway because it's the word that we use. Let's get you back in. This important word is correlation. For those of you um, who are thinking about it, I know there's lots of you who are. For those of you who are thinking about doing standard next year, this word is a really big deal because it's a huge statistical concept when you've got two different things and they're related in some way. And we can quantify this. That's something you might explore next year. Okay. So let me just recap. This is a way of representing data, just like the ways you've seen before. But the big difference is, what's the big difference? What's the big difference? There's two variables, right? When you go up, down versus left, right, you're looking at two completely different things, okay? What's each dot represent? In this case? Height and shoe size. Height and shoe size for this person, or for that person, or that person, okay? You can look, and now I'm going to draw your attention back to this. You can see, when you compare some of these scatter plots, you don't always see a relationship, do you? Have a look at that graph all the way over on the right-hand side. Do you see that one? There's an X variable, there's a Y variable. Do you see why the shape tells you there's not really any relationship at all? Yes. Can you see why? Imagine if it were height and shoe size. Just imagine. Okay? So then you would look at all the people who are this tall, and you'd say, what do their shoe sizes look like? They're all over the place. And then you look at people who are much shorter, and you look at their shoe size, and you'd say, they're all over the place, right? So it's not like there's any close connection. Have a look at B in the middle. It's the opposite. What would you describe is happening here? Yeah, Jake. Shoe size increases with shorter. Yeah. This one, this one, look, it's going down. Okay, so let's let's stop this. How about what would be something where you increase one value and that decreases Another one. Have a look at the board. Have a think about something like this. What's something that might, as temperature increases, what's something that might decrease as the things get hotter? Water. Wind. Amount of water in the air. Wind? I don't Wind's think necessarily. You can have a hot day that's windy <laughs> and a cold day that's windy, right? How about this? How about if each of these dots were a day of the month or something like that? This might be temperature. And this might be, say, number of soccer players out on the field. Think about that. When it's a really hot day, what does that tell you about the number of soccer players? It's really small. You see it's close to this axis, right? And then as it gets cooler, you get more and more people playing soccer. Does that make sense? So, there's a moderate relationship, or a tight relationship, or no relationship. The last idea is, there's a direction, right? As Jake just pointed out, this one goes down. What's our word for down? Negative, Negative right? <laughs> Negative. The other one, when it goes up, is... Thank you. Okay, Brian got it, just beat me to the point. Okay. 